Who are we? Where did we come from? What is our purpose in the universe? I have no idea. I'm not here to talk about any of those things. <laughs> However, when you hear the question, how old is the universe? How long have we been here? You get two really interesting answers. 6,000 years and 13.8 billion years. Now, that's quite a discrepancy. See, one is an answer of science, the other an answer of religion. You can guess which one is which. If you can't, I can't help you with that. <laughs> no, this isn't a discussion about religion versus science, thankfully, because I'm not qualified for that. This is, however, a discussion about the gap between those two. In fact, a gap between any two individuals who seem to be at odds. Because let's face it, nowadays, that gap seems to be larger and larger. And what's weird about it is that we seem so much further from each other in this day and age of high-tech communication devices, we seem so far away from each other, so far removed, because we have removed our ability to communicate effectively with one another. We've become isolated. Why? Because of cognitive dissonance. Because when I start to believe something, and you believe something other, you become other. You are you, I am me. That is a problem. Why? Why is it such a big issue to disagree in this day and age? And it could be really something innocuous, like Coke, Pepsi. Why do I have to hate a Pepsi drinker if I like Coke? Why do I have to hate an Xbox user if I use a PlayStation? Why do I have to hate a Mac user if I'm using a PC? Why do I have to hate someone if they're in a red state, if I'm in a blue one? That, my friends, is what we face in our society today. Where does that come from, cognitive dissonance? What does that mean? It simply means that we have to find a way to make ourselves feel better about decisions we make. Because a decision that I make, if it's different from yours, there is no way that we're going to see eye to eye, so why should I even try, right? That's a problem. If you don't see that as a problem, you have a really big one. Because we, as ladies and gentlemen of the world, have a duty to start to learn how to communicate better with one another all over again. Let's be honest with ourselves. We live in a society where if you decide something differently from me, I'm going to insult you and feel better about myself. What do you mean? Oh, it's simple. Hey, uh, you believe in religion, right? Yeah? Well, don't you find yourself ignorant? Huh? Aren't you an imbecile? Well, you believe in science, right? Yeah? Well, don't you consider yourself soulless and you're going straight to hell? Yeah, I don't see how those two people can't get along. If all they do is insult each other, if their whole lives are about insulting each other, instead, they should try to find a way to connect with one another. Shouldn't that be the case? Shouldn't we do that? Doesn't it make sense that we should? And a lot of people are going to say, well, no, give up trying. They're just too far away from me. They believe things that are too far different from me. There is no way that this person would see eye to eye 
the same way that I should. Well, I'm going to tell you two things tonight. The first is tell you how we can do it, and then tell you then why we should do it. So let's start with the how. It's interesting because all of our knowledge is kind of chopped up into three different categories. Belief, truth, and fact. Belief is something that I personally feel, I personally hold. That's a concept that I have. Truth is something that we generally share with one another. And fact, it's undisputed. I'm sorry, let me clear something up right now. There is no such thing as alternative fact. By its very definition, fact is undisputed. Therefore, there is no alternative to that. Thank you very much. <laughs> so uh, on to the how. How do we now communicate effectively with one another, Ian? You're such a wise guy. How do we use this stuff to do it? The first thing we have to do is recognize that you can't bring beliefs to a fact issue, nor can you bring facts to a belief system. It's very hard to do it when you're not talking on the same terms. It's impossible to do it when the other person is looking at you and says to you, you're wrong, straight out. So what you have to do is recognize that a person believes in something as a fact and holds it as a fact because they feel it's undisputed. But if they believe something that's contrary to that fact, you have to approach it in a new way. Meaning to say you have to break down what it is they hold as a fact. But we've become lazy. We have. If you think about it, all you do is offer up a fact and expect the person to buy it. And that's it. So how is that conversation supposed to go? Hey, <laughs> the world is uh, 6,000 years old. Are you ignorant? Uh, wow, I guess I didn't think of it that way. Uh, maybe I am ignorant. Maybe I should just change my ways. No, it doesn't happen like that. Obviously, if you alienate a person by insulting them, there is nothing gained in that process. What we have to do is find a way to have the words necessary to articulate so that that person can now understand what you're posing to them. But we've stopped doing that. Think about it. As human beings, we've stopped. We've used other people to tell this message to us. We've sold this on other people's words. We have to find and rediscover our own eloquence. That is our duty. We have to do that. But why? We have to do it because we live in a very diverse world. No, I'm not just saying diversity for the sake of saying diversity. I'm actually going to tell you why diversity is important. Because you think about it, we always talk to people and tell them, we need to have diversity. But you never think to yourself, why? What would change in your world? Well, it's simple as this. If everybody here today believed in the truths and the facts that I do, and we're all in the same position, and we're faced with a problem, what we're going to do is come up with solutions. But I guarantee you, every single person here will come up with the same solution that I come up with. Right? Well, of course, if you all have the same beliefs, truths, and facts that I do, we're all going to be in one big echo chamber, repeating the same concepts again and again and again. And what happens? Someone says, you know what? This problem's too big for us to solve. We need out-of-the-box thinking. Well, I'm sorry, genius, you're all in the same box. To have out-of-the-box thinking, you need someone who can think differently. So you need cognitive diversity. You need a way to think differently. Challenge your concepts, challenge your beliefs, challenge your truths, and yes, even the facts. Because it's in that process 
that you'll find the ability to reconnect with a human being. And maybe that human being who once upon a time held you in contempt, held you with so much hatred, held you in such low regard as to think anything you had to say was not important. Maybe that one person, that one day, realizing that you're reaching out to them, will reach back. And when they do, what do you tell them? Rediscover your eloquence and then speak.